What we're looking at here is a renal corpuscle. We can see Bowman's capsule around the outside and the gemellulus inside. And in essence, it's fairly straightforward. Blood goes in via the afferent arteriole, labelled 6 here. From here the blood goes into the capillary network or the ball of capillaries which is the glomerulus. As the blood goes through the glomerulus the process of ultrafiltration takes place and glomerular filtrate is formed. The glomerular filtrate moving from the glomerular capillaries into the space, this glomerular space. Then the blood goes out again via the efferent arteriole labelled 7 in this model. And the filtration is on grounds of molecular size. So large molecules like proteins or large structures like blood cells will not be filtered out because it's an ultrafiltration. But smaller molecules like water amino acids, glucose and atomic scale structures such as ions will be freely filtered into the glomerular filtrate. So let's look at this in a little more detail. Now if we take this out actually we can see the capsule. What we're looking at there is Bowman's capsule, still called Bowman's capsule. And this is the parietal epithelium, the outside layer, the parietal epithelium. And all this area in here is Bowman's space, the Bowman space. And it's into Bowman's space that the glomerular filtrate will be filtered out into. And then we notice once the glomerular filtrate is formed, it goes down into the first part of the renal tubule. that is the proximal renal tubule and as we can see this has got a brush border this is composed of microvilli and this increases greatly the internal surface area for the reabsorption processes that need to take place the brush border made of microvilli I'm going to try and put my uh, glomerulus back in now. There we have the glomerulus back in, more or less. And now we can see that the ultrafiltration takes place between the capillaries of the glomerulus and Bowman space. Once the glomerular filtrate is formed, we can see it can go from the space down into the proximal part of the nephron for the processes of reabsorption to start to take place. So the afferent arteriole is bringing blood in from a branch of the renal artery. And we can see there's a swollen bit here that's part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which we'll be thinking about later on. But for now, we notice that these cells, these granular cells that form the juxtaglomerular apparatus, are in close proximity to this structure perched on top here. Now, what this structure is, is this is actually the distal convoluted tubule or the start of the distal convoluted tubule of the very same nephron that started there at the bottom. So this goes down the descending loop, around the loop of Henley, back up, and it finds its own glomerulus again. And the juxta glomerular apparatus, juxta means beside, so you can see that this is beside the glomerulus. 
And this part here, where the cells are closer together, is called the macula densa. And the juxtacamellular apparatus is that bit. And the cells in the wall of the afferent arteriole as well. So that's the distal tubule with a macula densa. And then we can see that the efferent arteriole is leaving there. And the afferent and the efferent arteriole are lined with vascular endothelial cells. So the capsula are epithelial cells, but the blood vessels are lined with endothelial cells. Now it's fairly obvious when we look at this glomerulus that it's in two colours. We've got a white bit on one side and a red bit on the other side. What's that about? Well, this does not represent a histological change. It's just this model trying to explain things to us. So if we look at the left part first, what we're actually seeing there, labelled nine on this model, what we're actually seeing there, if we looked at it from the outside, we would see that the capillary, the gamellular capillary, is covered with these cells called podocytes. And these podocytes, pod means feet, they are cells with feet, as we'll see. This forms the visceral epithelium. So Bowman's capsule is the parietal epithelium, and the podocytes are the visceral epithelium of the glomerular capsule. And we notice that there are very fine red lines here. These fine red lines there. And they represent the filtration slits between the individual podocytes. So the podocytes have these feet-like structures that wrap around the glomerular capillaries. And those red lines that we see there are actually filtration slits. The glomerular filtrate is physically filtered through those slits from the lumen of the capillary into Bowman space. And they're actually covered with something called a slit membrane as well, which is also dialyzing as it generates glomerular filtrate. Now, when we look at the other side of the capillary here, labeled capillary is labeled eight. What we're actually seeing there is these are exactly the same cells, but they're well exactly the same structure. It's still the glomerular capillaries but it's modelled without the podocytes. So if you like in the red capillaries, the podocytes have been dissected off to reveal the vascular endothelial cells. And we notice in the vascular endothelial cells that there are dark areas representing the nuclei of the cells. And if we look at greater detail we can probably see that there's lots of smaller dots all over these are actual little physical pores called fenestrations so this means that the blood is exposed sometimes to the capillary membrane and sometimes to these fenestrations little holes and in life these endothelial capillary cells where we see the fenestrations are actually covered with a basement membrane that goes round like that, like this piece of film. They're completely surrounded by that basement membrane. And it's this basement membrane surrounding the vascular endothelium and the fenestrations of the glomerular capillaries that is the dialyzing membrane. So in order to be uh, dialyzed, in order for ultrafiltration to take place, material goes through the fenestrations, through the dialyzing membrane, through the slip filters in the podocytes, and through these filtration slits in the podocytes before it can get out into Bowman space, where it is then glomerular filtrate after this dialyzing process of ultrafiltration has taken place. And it's interesting that when you take into account the various 
forces involved, the positive pressure inside the capillaries is only around 10 millimetres of mercury overall when we account for the osmotic pressures and the reverse pressures. So the dialyzing process is taking place under a pressure of 10 millimetres of mercury. Any material left in the capillaries that is not subject to ultrafiltration will leave via the efferent arterial. So the process through is afferent arterial, glomerular capillary cells, where the blood is subject to this physical filtration process, out through the efferent arterial and exiting the glomerulus from the efferent arterial. Now I want to spend a little bit of time on this fascinating structure here, the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Now these cells in the wall and extending out from the wall of the afferent arterial are modified smooth muscle cells. And these are the juxtaglomerular cells. They're sometimes called granular cells because they appear granular. And the reason that they appear granular is they contain vesicles of renin. So this is the place where the renin is uh, produced and secreted. And these cells are sometimes described as myoendocrine cells because they have the characteristics of muscle cells. They're part of the smooth muscle wall of the afferent arterial, but they're also secretory. They secrete the renin. Now, the renin, as you probably know, acts on the renin angiotensin mechanism and that will cause vasoconstriction, raising blood vessels, raising blood pressure by constricting blood vessels throughout the body. And it will also increase the amount of aldosterone present in the blood, which will increase sodium reabsorption. And this happens in two basic ways. First of all, if the blood pressure passing through the afferent arteriole is reduced, that's detected in the afferent arteriole. And if the blood pressure is low, these cells will respond by producing renin. And renin will stimulate the angiotensin mechanism. And that will raise blood pressure by increasing the amount of sodium in the blood, therefore increasing intravascular volume. And also via the mechanism of peripheral vasoconstriction. So that will increase blood pressure. But there's a second mechanism here, and it's related to these macular denser cells. Now, these macular denser cells are cells which appear closer together, the nuclei are closer together. And they're different from the cells in other areas of the distal convoluted tubule and indeed other parts of the nephron. And these macular denser cells are able to respond to sodium levels in the filtrate. So if the sodium levels in the filtrate are low, these cells will produce messages, chemical based messengers, which will go to the granular cells, stimulating them to produce renin. So the renin can be produced directly. It can be stimulated by low blood pressure in the afferent arterial, but renin can also be stimulated when these macular denser cells detect low levels of sodium in the filtrate. And the point about low levels of sodium in the filtrate is that that indicates a reduced glomerular filtration rate. 
So if the glomerular filtration rate is reduced, that can be detected in this distal tubule. And the distal tubule can release chemicals locally here, cytokine type chemicals, that can cause renin to be released and can also alter the vasotone of this afferent arterial. So if there's a reduced glomerular filtration, that can be regulated by dilation of the afferent arterial, allowing more blood to go into the glomerulus, thereby increasing the glomerular filtration rate. So it's very clever that the distal tubule there with the macula densa is actually controlling the formation of the glomerular filtrate, which will shortly be in that tubule. So each nephron is auto-regulating itself. And this is called tubuoglomerular feedback, feedback between the tube, the nephron, and the uh, glomerulus, tubuloglomerular feedback. And that controls and regulates GFR, glomerular filtration rate. So the nephron is via this juxtaglomerular apparatus is controlling its own activity, but it's also relating or controlling whole body blood pressure. And in fact, the most common cause of essential hypertension is that the kidney for some reason is producing too much renin, stimulating the angiotensin mechanism excessively. That's a brief introduction to the glomerulus and the renal corpuscle and the juxtaglomerular apparatus.